In this video, we will know about the effects of globalization on Indian society. So this is a very important topic and it comes in, comes in GS mains paper one. So effects of globalization on Indian society, it comes in general studies mains paper one. So uh, let's look at the effects of globalization on Indian society in this video. So first we have to look at the basic definition of globalization. So as we all know, the structure of UPSC answer is definition, then body, then conclusion. So um, you can also give disadvantages and disadvantages in conclusion. But the main thing is that the first one is the basic definition. So you have to learn the basic standard definition of every uh, topic or concept. So you can give definitions given by United Nations or some organization or some, um, uh, some agency or commission or uh, committee so all these are very important definitions so or some uh, survey or some report which which has or indices which are which have been published by an important organization so these are very important for basic definitions so let's see what are the what is the basic definition of globalization so when we talk globalization it is simply about the spread of products technology information and jobs across national borders and cultures so globalization is nothing but spread of technology products firstly trade that is spread of products then technology countries share technology with each other it is a globalized world then information and jobs across national borders and cultures jobs are also spread across national borders and cultures because many people migrate to other countries in search of jobs and many migrate to uh, the many migrate from rural areas to urban areas also and national borders also and cultures there are there is intermixing and intermingling of cultures so this is known as globalization because obviously different regions in the world different countries and different states in the world have different cultures traditions and customs so obviously if there is migration and there is globalization movement of people around in and around the countries and uh, the, the there will be an intermixing of cultures and different cultures will uh, learn from from uh, the other cultures and sometimes there is communal violence also due to these things so there is a benefit as well as a disadvantage of everything so now let's move forward it describes an interdependence of nations around the globe fostered it describes an interdependence of nations around the globe fostered through free trade in economic terms having no direct negative implications for the society so there is an interdependence of nations. There are some nations which are resource rich in some areas, other nations which are resource rich in some sectors. So there is an interdependence in some, some, there are some countries which are performing better in some sectors and other countries performing better in some sectors. Like the Western world is more industrialized than the Eastern one. And the Southeastern Asia, Asia is much more uh, dependent on agriculture or, and services sector rather than manufacturing sector. So all the countries are interdependent and some countries are only dependent on their natural resources or biodiversity or tourism. So every country has its own USP and they are interdependent on each other. So globalization helps in the cooperation of these country, countries and multilateral organizations are there for peace and cooperation. Uh, and uh, peace cooperation and uh, and regulating trade and commerce as well as many other uh, things and they help in the cooperation and coordination in different countries so that this interdependence helps in the development of the developing countries or underdeveloped countries and also benefits the developed countries uh, in whichever sectors they need so there is an interdependence of nations around the globe fostered through free trade in economic terms. There is free trade in economic terms, which has been established by World Trade Organization. And uh, who has, whoever has signed this free trade agreement by World Trade Organization is a member of World Trade Organization has to follow this. And these, uh, uh, these, these rules and regulations given by World Trade Organization and having no direct ne negative implications for society. So this globalization, which you talk about, should have no direct implication for negative implication for society it should always benefit us so if it is having negative implication then the globalization for that country is not beneficial so the country should go for deglobalization which is reverse globalization protectionist policy and help in uh, help in securing its people which will help in securing its people as well as as well as its market so it is also a term deglobalization is also a term but nowadays it is being uh, 
it is uh, it is it is an established fact that the countries with, um, that the countries which support globalization are much more free and developed and uh, are performing better in many sectors that than the countries which are deglobalized so let's move forward so this is another definition of globalization globalization is a significant factor in competitive world that integrate and mobilize cultural values of people at global level so as we as we knew in as we discussed in the earlier slide it is it will integrate and mobile, mobilize people as well as the cultural values of people at global level in the age of rapid technical progression many countries are unified and transformed due to the process of globalization so as there is as there is interdependence of countries so many countries will transform and uh, will benefit from other countries as well as benefit from the free trade agreements free commerce as well as free technology sharing free access to education in other countries so it will help in the unification of countries as well as progression of countries and transformation of countries due to the process of globalization globalization is also a significant factor in competitive world the world will become more competitive as there will be more competitiveness and the talent will not be wasted talent of the people and the country will not be wasted and the, 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 this will be an integrated and mobilized world and the cultural values of the people will be mixed at the global level so globalization has a huge impact on culture social monetary political and communal life of countries obviously it will have a great impact we'll look at it how it will have a great great impact in further slides but obviously it will have a great impact on culture social monetary political and communal life of countries so globalization is a process of interaction and integration among the people organizations and governments of different nations not only the people interact but the governments and organizations of different nations also interact with each other due to globalization there are many international organizations and fo and forums for forums are organized as well as many uh, many uh, meetings and delegations take place between different countries how they can help each other as well as help in transforming and developing each other's lives as well as impacting each other like each other's lives and giving better facilities to the people of every country so that this world becomes a better place to live in so it is an integration between people organizations and governments of different nations a process driven by international trade and investment and aided by information technology nowadays the information and communication technology has made it very very easy to for in people of different countries as well as people as well as people living in different parts of the world to interact as well as um, as well as impact the lives of other peoples living in other other parts of the world because of the information and communication technology especially in areas such as education as well as healthcare and management healthcare consultants consultation business processing outsourcing as well as education so these are the areas which have, which have, which have been impacted the most due to information and communication technology so now we'll look at something which is historical from the point of perspective of globalization so it is not that today only globalization is a new is a new term and the globalization has started recently as we go in the history and the early periods of globalization we will see that globalization is being taking has been taking place from a long time ago so india was not isolated from the world even 2000 years ago we know about the historical and famous silk route which centuries ago connected india to great civilizations which existed in china persia egypt and rome so india was con uh, connected through the silk route as well as through the sea trade route that is india india had a large peninsula so it was very 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 much very much connected to the middle eastern world as well as other countries through the sea trade route also and to the inland countries through the silk route uh, inland countries of middle east as well as central asia and europe as well as china so this is this was also a th uh, thing of globalization as trade was carried out as well as there was intermingling of culture and society and traditions and customs and many many uh, scholars authors as well as writers poets and uh, uh, and many other people also came to uh, came to india from different parts of the different parts of the world they wrote about the history of india culture of india society of india these books are still with us and and uh, form an important important part of our historical uh, historical underpinnings and heritage as well as there were invasions which transformed the architecture arts culture society uh, traditions customs and uh, fooding habits as well as clothing habits of indian people so especially the mughal invasion so and it is present in india still now and so this is the way that uh, globalization affects people's lives and changes people's mindset so this is what uh, now we also know that throughout india's long past people from different parts came here sometimes as traders sometimes as conquerors sometimes as migrants in search of 
new lands and settled down here. For example, as we can see here, the British came as traders and the Mughals came as conquerors. But uh, as time passed, the British turned conquerors and some people as migrants also came and then left India after some time. There are many dynasties which ruled India in the medieval period as well as the ancient period. So this is what is globalization is global. This is what globalization was like in the ancient times. Now, though this exchange process is going on for time immemorial, this process was termed as globalization for the first time around the second half of the 20th century. This process was going on from the time immemorial, but this the term globalization was coined in 1950s. That is the that is in the 20th century and around the second half of the 20th century. Now we will look at the factors which aid globalization. So the first factor is technology. So as we know, information and communication technology, it impacts global, it impacts people's lives in a great way. And also it impacts people's lives in a great way and also helps in, helps people to develop their skills as well as knowledge. So information and communication technologies uh, is playing a very important role in the de in aiding globalization and it has impacted lives of millions of peoples not only it has impacted lives of billions of peoples in different countries in providing better healthcare facilities education then consultancy services as well as business uh, trade export and communication and then transport then also in different sectors like agricultural innovation and scientific scientific and research innovation technology sharing and also satellite communication business processing outsourcing then these are the sectors in which the technology has impacted the it has aided globalization the most as well as animal husbandry all these are genetically modified crops all these are the uh, factors in which the technology has aided globalization then lpg reforms which india introduced in 1991 as there was a large fiscal deficit in the country and the uh, our, our foreign reserves were running out so india had to open its market to the, uh, the uh, india had to open its market uh, the and uh, sell its gold reserves and open its market to the world so that free trade and uh, trade and uh, commerce could be carried out with the country so this was known as lpg reforms that is liberalization privatization and globalization uh, india earlier it was a socialist country and most of the sectors were controlled by public sector undertakings and uh, government controlled labor and capital was there but uh, there were only very few private companies which were indian and they were operating in india so there was they, it was a closed economy so that the companies don't face competition from the world which was resulting in the downfall of the rupee uh, as well as not resulting in research and innovation in the country so this was what lpg reforms were uh, lpg so in the end india india was under a great fiscal deficit as well as the foreign exchange reserves were uh, running out and inflation was at an all time high of 16.7 percent from 6.7 percent so india opened its market for to liberalization privatization and globalization after that the country started developing at a very fast pace and also there were uh, there were large scale uh, there was large scale investment from foreign companies mncs and foreign banks also in india and the rate and the growth gdp growth as well as the growth in diff different sectors was very much at par with uh, at par with global level and uh, now india has become the fifth or sixth largest economy in the world so this is what uh, lpg reforms aided the globalization in india then faster transportation so globalization is uh, is a form of trade and commerce that the, there is a free world free trade and commerce between countries so of course it will need faster transportation it will aid globalization so it may be sea route or rail route or air route so faster transportation freight corridors as we know new freight corrid corridors are being developed by the indian government the eastern freight corridor the western freight corridor which will help in the faster uh, transportation of goods uh, from one state to another as well as there are uh, several ports and seaports which are being developed by india like chabar port in iran and, and the some ports in sri lanka as well as uh, india is also developing uh, ra railway lines in sri lanka and so these are all of, these are done to aid globalization so that there is a fast movement of transport of goods and trade and services and especially uh, natural resources such as oil and natural gas which are very beneficial for the growth of an economy so this is what this is how faster transportation aids globalization then comes of rise of world trade organization the world trade organization as it was formed and all the member countries who have signed the agreement and especially the agricultural agreement in 1995 in uruguay opened the indian mar market to agriculture 
so the protectionist tendencies of uh, indian agriculture and end, ended and now after the rise of world trade organization this every uh, there is always this is a multilateral organization and it is open to free trade and commerce for all countries as well as reducing the tariffs and trade barriers it helps in reducing the tariffs and trade trade barriers uh, trade barriers and making this place uh, making this making this world a better trade and be, uh, better trade trading trading uh, trading global uh, platform so that is what rise of world trade organization has resulted in and it has impact it has impacted globalization as a, in a very very large or a large way because all the countries which are apart have to follow the rules and regulations of the world trade organization also due to the world trade organization and uh, also due to the world trade organization there are many developing countries as well as developed countries which are benefiting from these rules and regulations so and it promotes the interdependence of country and a multilateral world with uh, per, uh, world uh, which supports each other coordinates and cooperates with each other and helps in the development of each and every country inclusive development and equal development of each and every country so this is what rise of world trade organization this is how it has impacted the aid uh, impacted globalization and aiding globalization helped in aiding globalization then improved mobility of capital due to the opening of market liberalization privatization and globalization india was able to take loans from different banks as well as different organizations like uh, world bank as well as international monetary fund and uh, the the direct foreign direct investments large amount of foreign direct investments came into india increasing the foreign reserves as well as private investments were made into many states by different monthly multinational companies as well as organizations and uh, many factories and manufacturing units were established by many other uh, many other countries operating in different many other companies operating in dif uh, different parts of the world and uh, different countries because in india there was cheap labor as well as uh, india was a cheap labor as well as market intensive capital with huge demand in economy because of huge population so improved mobility of capital helped in the investment helped india to get for fdis as well as loans from different uh, organizations and world banks helping in the development of different sectors like infrastructure as well as infrastructure as well as uh, infrastructure in many other sectors like agriculture also infrastructure services sector manufacturing sector also the technology and the and the capital which which came helped in the improvement of technology as well as machines uh, which are used to manufacture goods that there was uh, were were better due to the but due to the large amount of capital they get they, the companies could uh, buy better machines and the manufacturing cap manufacturing capacity could be increased so this is all this this was the effect of as well as other sector also transport and shipping and railways the technology helped in building better and faster transportation systems also so it impacted every every person's life and every sector of the indian economy so this is what improved mobility of capital was uh, this is how this is how aid, uh, improved mobility of capital aided globalization in india then rise of multinational corporations there were many multinational corporations after liberalization privatization and globalization reforms many foreign companies opened their offices and manufacturing units in india because labor in india was very cheap as well as skilled skilled persons in india were available at very cheap rates so business processing and outsourcing consultancy services as well as information and communication technology services and also manufacturing sector saw the rise of mncs and uh, they are still operating in india and earning huge profits as well as giving employment to the youth as well as uh, people from other people from other age groups and uh, the the increase in jobs helped in uh, increased in increase in jobs helped in increasing the gdp of the country as well as increasing the purchasing power parity of the country and well as well as um, impacting the standard of lives of the people and the increasing the income of the people so this is how rise of mncs aided the globalization in india now we'll like look at the impacts of globalization in india so the impact of globalization in india is there are greater number of jobs so as the the as the as it is a globalized india now so more and more companies are operating in india indian companies as well as foreign companies and companies from different parts of the world are opening manufacturing units as well as other service providers are opening their uh, the opening their offices in the country 
so a large number of jobs are being provided to people who are skilled as well as those who are unskilled the government of india has uh, um, the government of india has started a scheme known as skill india so these these people uh, so these people who are not skilled are provided with skills and uh, this is a more 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 and more analytical as well as logical and rational um, world now rational india now because the, there are greater number of jobs the uh, the youth are getting jobs more and more jobs and are living a better standard of life as well as uh, uh, compared to earlier india and they are they are uh, much more indulged in, in consumerism so this is how this is one of the great impacts of globalization in india so the second impact is that more choice is given to the consumers that is if there are more companies of earlier india was a socialist com- country protectionist country and a very less companies were operating in india in any sector if you look at when very less companies were operating in india especially and most of them were indian companies they were not facing any competition from the uh, outer companies because it was a protectionist policy and first the m- most of the industrial sector was publicly controlled that is state controlled and it was very very unreliable at as well as slow in uh, in implementing the policies and the development so as it as the as india opened after the lpg reforms as india opened its market to the foreign companies the consumerism there was a consumerism boon and uh, many more companies started there started uh, impacting the lives of people in india and opening their uh, opening and uh, selling goods and services to the people in india so it provided more choice to the consumers as well as more competitiveness was there in the market so the price of the goods and services also went down and as well as the indian companies uh, firstly they suffered but after that they started competing with the foreign companies and they knew that now they have to provide better facilities as well as goods and services with better, better quality to the consumers otherwise they will not be able to withstand in the market so this is how more choice of the consumers this is one of the impact this was one of the impacts of globalization as there was more choice to consumers then higher disposable income as people are getting more and more jobs so obviously they will have higher disposable income especially the people in big cities who are working multi- multinational companies and earning a good salary have higher higher disposable incomes as well as entrepreneurs who have established their own businesses industrialists businessman so many of the indian companies have become international companies they are operating in different parts of the world they are multinational companies like tata mahindra all these are multinational companies the adani group the rahaja group these are all the multinational famous multinational companies of india bajaj then hcl these and then infosys wipro these are all the very 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 big multinational companies and multinational giants so these these the, these companies also provide jobs to indians as well as persons in other countries so higher disposable and the people and the countries and the companies such as uh, the foreign companies from other parts of the world like usa canada and european companies started operating in india so they they provided job, good and uh, good salary as well as good jobs to the people in india and resulting in higher disposable in- income the f- uh, fourth impact is protein food inflation as there was a higher disposable income so the fooding habits of the people changed and uh, earlier the fooding habit habit was more focused on cereals and pulses and the green revolution was all about food security and um, and Uh, the green revolution was more about food security and increasing the uh, production of the cereals as well as pulse, pulses so that it could meet the requirements of the indian people fooding requirements of the indian people but after the globalization impact of um, globalization as the salary of the people increased then people move, move more towards the protein food intake that is milk curd eggs fish meat all these were more people started more eating more of these foods because it was quality food and so there the demand was more and the supply was less so it led to white revolution uh, and many other revolution like yellow revolution and uh, the protein food inflation is still high uh, because uh, still much more has to be done to uh, in- government still imports much of the uh, protein foods from different countries and the f- the production in india is still not able to meet all the requirements of the people so f- uh, protein food inflation is still high because the demand is more and the supply is less so the cost of food items which provide protein like pulses as well as if it is a if we, if, we, if the person is vegetarian or if it is he is non vegetarian then other so like fish egg meats chicken 
uh, packed food items packed protein items so these are the, the inflation is there in these food items and the cost is more compared to vegetarian items then shrinking agricultural sector so as uh, we know the subsidies of the farmers are reducing day by day and uh, as people are dependent on more on as it is a globalized india now so people in many 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 especially the big cities depend on uh, fast moving consumer goods and they go to malls as well as uh, to buy food items which are which are available at a very cheap rate as well as this is impacting the lives of the farmers because farmers work hard to cultivate these crops and the government the government buys these crops from the farmer and to the, and the government has the farmers have to sell these crops in the mandis or to the government or to to the private players big private players or or the middlemen at a very low low cost and this results in a and if there is a crop failure this results in a lot of farmer suicides uh, because they are not able to meet their daily requirements from the uh from the uh, wages that they earn and also th there are the share of land holdings in india uh, is becoming low day by day per capita land holding is very low because of the large population so it is only the for some of the farmers only have that much land that they will uh, they will be able to sustain their family they will be able to grow that much crops only Uh, that they they are able to sustain their families so they are not able to provide profit to the farmers so uh, many more and so this is a very uh, very disadvantaged impact of globalization in india which shrinking agriculture sector it, it only contributes 15% of gdp now but earlier it contributed almost 50% of india's gdp now the gdp in manufacturing sector and and mostly in the services sector is increasing day by day so this is what shrinking in agricultural sector looks like and so uh, government should take take uh, should aim at increasing the uh, agricultural sector and it should not be benefit or the agriculture sh sector should not get any the benefit due to globalization after that there is the increase in healthcare cost so as we know this uh, if there is a globalized world then uh, virus or bacteria which uh, which is impacting one community or one region or one country in in some part of the world may travel to Uh, other country in different part of the world the pathogens and also there are development of diseases in many uh, many countries from animals so there is an increase in healthcare cost like if we take the uh, case of covid it spread from china to the whole whole of the world and many people died as well as many people succumb to the uh, succumb to the uh, succumb due to covid and many people died due to covid as well as many were ill for many many days this this impacted the economy of many, all, almost all the countries in the world and the whole world was under lockdown so this is how increase in healthcare and only the only the there was only one sector which was booming at this time that was that was the healthcare sector and so all the people were running to the hospitals and uh because uh, because of the fear of covid and those who got covid were were, were obviously were admitted to the hospitals the ho uh, hospitals were not able to uh, the resources were less there was a resource scarcity and uh, scarcity and the hospitals were not able to ac accommodate all the patients so there was an increase in healthcare cost there was a shortage of medicines as well so this is in one disease or virus or pathogens in one part of the world can impact people in other parts of the world very easily due to globalization which leads in leads to increase in healthcare cost so this is one of the bad effects of globalization or disadvantage of glo globalization or de benefit of globalization the first de disadvantage was shrinking agricultural sector in india second disadvantage is increase in healthcare cost in india then there is the child labor this is the third disadvantage in india still the child labor has been banned and uh, especially child under 18 years cannot be put on job and uh special uh, child under 18 years cannot be put on a job earlier it was that child under 18 years cannot be put into hazardous jobs like factory workers mine workers etc but now 18 years of age till you are 18 18 of years of age no one can put you to work because you have to because children under 18 years are considered as minor and there is a there is a right to education which which provides uh, children between 6 to 14 years of age free education so this is what but still many people in india don't understand this because they are ma not much educated and the, and ma ma many of the people in india are not much edu not much edu educated and uh, and the parents are not educated the family members are not educated as well as the child is not educated and not aware of his rights so many many uh, many young boys as well as girls in india start working at a very early age to support the family and especially in the rural areas they work in the fields they work in mines factories the government is still not able to to uh, they work as uh, um, plantation workers or in mines factories as well as in many other garages then mechanic shops then tailors 
uh, the tailors then hairdressers uh, makeup artists these are all the uh, low paid jobs because they don't don't have education and they don't have skills to support fruit sellers vegetable sellers they don't have education they don't have the capacity to support themselves so whatever the skill they have they utilize that skill and they start earning for them as well as their families so this is um, this is one of the disadvantage of the globalization in india because child labor has increased and people are exploiting children for their benefit now show 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 cultural impact on indian access on india uh, show, on indian on indians so this is the socio cultural impact on indians due to globalization so first one is access to education so many of the indians are not still not able to uh, not able to uh, get access to education because education in private institutions have become very costly especially in private schools and colleges so they have to go to government schools and colleges where the education standard as well as the is not that good and the training the teacher, teachers are not teachers are good but the teachers are not trained how to how to teach children and how to provide knowledge to the children so these are some of the shortcomings of the indian education system but due to the d- development of information communication technolo- technology the knowledge is available free online so the government is pushing towards digital universities government of india so that the students can enroll in them and get free education and free degrees so that each and every child in india gets education free of cost and uh, cost and if if a child a child in a family gets education free of cost then only the family will be able to develop uh, family will be able to develop the child will, will be able to earn an income for his family as well as be economic indepe- economically independent he will know about his rights he will know about how to become a g- good citizen of a country and uh, he will know how to become a good citizen of a country what laws he has to follow as well as hel- help in the contribution of gdp of a country and providing education to e- free education to each and every child then only india will be able to become a developed country so this is one of the socio cultural impact of globalization on indians then growth of cities as now people are migrating from rural to urban areas for better healthcare facilities education facilities financial facilities as well as sanitation facilities better fooding drinking and better standard of living so there is a growth of cities so people so the government has uh, started to build so it is uh, it is creating um, very much pressure on the resources of the cities and cities are uh, becoming crowded day by day as well as there is a scar- scarcity of resources in the cities so the pr- government is promoting public transport as well as better management of cities by developing 100 smart cities in the country which in which there are some brownfield smart cities as well as greenfield smart cities this is this will help in the migration of people from rural to urban areas and also the de- government is developing uh, go- government is developing some some villages which which will be followed as an inspira- inspirational villages so that all the villages are for, uh, are able to uh, are able to uh, look at these villages and able to imitate these villages in the development so in each and every des- district there there will be a one aspirational village so this will be one of the best village in the world which which provides all the facilities to the uh, people living in the village so that they don't have to migrate from the village to the cities for better facilities then indian cuisines as we now know that earlier there were only indian and traditional food available in india but now the indian cuisines has changed every type of food in every restaurant every uh, every hotel or every restaurant or every uh, every food stall is available like chinese continental italian american um, african then japanese korean all these types of food items are available everywhere so this is how indian cuisine has changed and people are also loving to eat these foods they are ordering pizza and burger and all these things from online online platforms have come like zomato and swiggy so they are contributing to the development of indian society there is an intermixing of fooding habits as well as intermixing of cultures then indian performing arts have changed earlier there was a uh, very very traditional approach to indian performing arts and uh, arts like Uh, and performing arts like bharatanatyam kuchipudi then kathakali chhau all these were very famous uh, every ghumar every state has a typical type of performing art associated to it but now the pop culture hop culture um, rap culture then pop hop rap culture as well as english english western culture is developing in terms of performing arts so it is impacting the indian society in a very in a very uh, we will say in a, it is impacting the uh, indian society and especially the children 
सो बिकॉज दे आर गेटिंग मोर एंड मोर अवेयर अबाउट द स्टाइल्स एंड डिफरेंट स्टाइल्स एंड डिफरेंट कल्चर्स अराउंड द वर्ल्ड स्पेशली द वेस्टर्न कल्चर्स एंड कल्चर्स फ्राम अदर कंट्रीज एंड दे आर ट्राइंग टू फॉलो दीज कल्चर्स सम पीपल लव इंडियन कल्चर बट सम डोंट डोंट लाइक सम लाइक टू फॉलो अदर कल्चर्स एज वेल एज दे आर इंडिपेंडेंट टू फॉलो विच एवर कल्चर दे लाइक सो परफॉर्मिंग आर्ट्स आर ऑल्सो गेटिंग वेरी मच अफेक्टेड then there are nuclear families earlier there was a family there was a joint family system but as the uh, there is a lot of pressure on youngsters these days to earn a lot of money as well as to live a better standard of living and live a better and give a better standard of life to their children as well as the family not family mean the uh, to their family that is their wife and children so they are uh, separating from their parents and uh, migrating to cities for better standard of living and working in multinational companies to earn a better uh, better living this is this is resulting in nuclear families because the uh, parents are left at home in the cities as well, and in the smaller cities or even if they are living in bigger cities then also uh, the uh, the children want to migrate from there to other cities or if they are living in that city also the child is not living with them and he wants to live an independent and economically independent life so this is how socio this is one of the socio cultural impact of globalization on indian then old age vulnerability as parents are living and in old age the parents are facing economic as well as mental and social as well as uh, emotional problems because children are leaving them and they have to they, are, they have to take much more help of the old age homes or or, or they are left alone by the children uh, because they are economically independent now and they don't want to live with their parents and they are left alone and so they have to take help of the old age homes or they have to take they have to keep someone as a staff so that they can take care of themselves during the old age because in the old age a person has to face many difficulties because of the um, because of the because the body is not not so strong physically as well as mentally and the the not many not much immune to the pathogens also so the a person gets many diseases as well as he can be impacted by even slight slight uh slightest of uh, slightest of something like even slightest slight test of uh, something can cause danger to the person so old age vulnerability is there then pervasive media and the the as there are global platforms like youtube and other channels also on the te- television so the media is present everywhere we can watch channels from all the media and websites on the on the in india sitting in india only so it is it is contributing to it is influencing the society as well as the people in india and they are forming their own opinion about the government about other people as well as other cultures and societies and they some sometimes lead to con- communal violence sometimes lead to communal harmony celebration of different festivals are there in each and every part of the world like new year christmas all these are celebrated in each and every part of the world whereas the, these are christian festivals still they are celebrated in every part of the world so this is due to the pervasive and spread of media then mcdonaldization is there that is the, the shift from tra- traditional to uh, logical thinking then Uh, thinking rational thinking so person don't want to follow the traditional way of life tra- lifestyle they want to follow the fast food style of lifestyle that is very fast and fast and uh, they want to achieve success very fast and as well as live a very logical lifestyle and efficient lifestyle so that they they they, they would be better in the long run it will be as it would be better in the long run but they don't uh, but the, uh, it is impacting their health because traditional way of lifestyle doesn't uh, focuses on, on organic as well as spiritual development whereas the mcdonaldization uh, mcdonaldized way of life focuses more more on com- consumerism and capitalism then there is the walmartization so this is one of the impacts you have to write in comments what is walmartization after that the psychological impact on indian society so bicultural identity some people are de- developing traditional identity as well as a western identity so are they, they are developing following traditional cultures as well as western culture or some other culture like listening to pop music as well as hindi music li- eating traditional food as well as western foods then wearing traditional dresses as well as wearing western dresses so this leads to a bicultural identity of a person in which we don't know that if a person is uh, is uh, faithful to a particular culture or not then growth of self selected culture that is people with uh, similar mindset are forming groups and associations which have which due to social media effect of social media it has become very easy to form groups associations and uh, organizations as well as uh, 
people with like minded set like minded people are forming like minded uh, groups and they are doing what they want to do and they are uh, following their passion so sometimes it is good sometimes it is bad but uh, it is impacting the lives of people in a better way then emerging adulthood that is the children getting mature earlier these days because they know that this is a consumerism and capitalism world and it, this is a capitalist economy so uh, they are getting more and more influence of the world outside due to social media and other platforms like especially the mobile phones which they have in their hand from their childhood and they are um, they know that they, if they have to uh, get respect in the society then they have to earn better li better living standards and earn money earn money then only they will be respected in this world they don't ab care about their spiritual development uh, or soulful development or uh, traditional development like uh, like people in india like going more to the gym than performing yoga but um, yoga is getting popular day by day in western countries so this is all uh, the uh, psychological impact on indian society as well as the world then consumerism this is one of the most psychological impact that uh, as there there are more choices more companies so the people are buying most more standard things as well as they, they are looking for better offers and they are looking to buy more and more expensive things and the companies are producing more and more expensive products day by day because they know that if they produce something then people will, will crave for it and all this all this is done by marketing and ad strategies and promoting consumerism so that the companies and the big companies and the big players are earning earning profit by impacting impacting the lives of the people psychologically uh, every every like if you take example of iphone then every year a new iphone is released and people are trying to buy these iphones so they have to earn that much money and they have to they have to uh, spend it on and spend it on an, a mobile phone or uh, so government so the company is giving different types of schemes uh, so that the people can buy these same is the case in different sectors like automobile sector or um, clothing sector and and companies want to make uh, ma make their customers a uh, long term customer and by providing offers and benefits to the customer so that the comp customers ca could get uh, giving gifts to the customer so the com customer gets dopamine release as we get, as we get, get benefits offers and gifts then the dopamine is released in the brain and we feel more uh, more and more good about the company so company the all the companies and the big players are trying to uh, form long term customers and trying to uh, impact customers in such a way that if there is a customer then he is a long term he becomes a long term customer of the company and the company does not lose the base so they are uh, trying new research options innovations to hold on to the customers and impress the customers so this is promoting the consumerism now there is the confusion that every educated indian seems to believe that nothing in india past or present is to be approved unless recognized and recommended by an appropriate authority in the west because uh, india is a country which has given spiritual awareness to the world and uh, so this is the thought of indian people then there is an all pervading presence of a positive if not worshipful attitude towards everything in western society and culture past as well as present that people are loving the western culture in each and every way and they are they are uh, ignoring the indian culture some people are there which promote indian culture but they are very less they are in, most of the people are ignoring uh, uh, indian culture and due to the uh, media the news the advertisements these they, they are impacting the lives of the people and they are uh, getting attracted to our western society capitalism consumerism more and more uh, without without uh, trying to satisfy their soul they are satisfying their pleasures so and culture pass as present in the name of progress reason and science so now people think that if the science does not prove it and reason does not prove it then there is no progress and indian culture is not that good if the west does not approve it but in reality indian culture is one of the most diverse cultures in the world and there is unity and diversity in the culture and, and it has been preserved from the uh, longest time so longest time that is time immemorial and it, it is still not destroyed so it will always be there and this should be checked to preserve the rich culture and diversity of india so that are, so in, in government should promote indian culture and tradition as well now the dynamics in global scenario suggest multilateralism and cooperation as the means to encounter the uncertainty and challenges so multilateral multilateralism should be there uh, cooperation should be there as a means to encounter the uncertainty and challenges then deglobalization which prote with protectionist attitude not only affects the economy but also social and psychological behavior of various communities so deglobalization should only be followed if, if the country is suffering a lot otherwise globalization is the day, is the need of the day so this is all about effects of globalization on indian society